Hello everyone and welcome back to Dishonored 2. This is episode 10. Last time we went through the crack in the slab mission and it was just an exceptional piece of level design. The way that we were able to navigate the timelines and see the effects that we could have. Uh, just very, very creative and amazing story developments as well. Seeing Stilton's response to Delilah's resurrection and how that triggered the culminating events and how we were able to prevent that and see a better part of Sokonos because of it. We can now see the Dust District in its glory of the Batista District. We can basically see that we eliminated the war between Paolo and Byrne in general because there's it's just not even an aspect of the timeline we now reside in. So we did all that stuff in the Dust District only for it to just cease to exist. Um, Megan Foster, no arm, no eye previously, and has now been fully restored because I guess that there was just no Stilton progression with her character there that resulted in that. So, very good stuff that we've seen so far. However, are there any negatives to come from changing time? We have yet to see the full consequences of our actions and how things may or may not play out from here. A lot of questions because it seems that a mission like this, this is a huge divergence in how you choose to handle Stilton because you can allow him to go as normal where he witnesses the horror you can knock him out or you could eliminate him entirely and that's like that's a pretty massive divergent point because it seems that Stilton's mental state is very important for the state of the Batista district because of how it showcases that result whether he goes crazy or not so really really wild to see that and I'm wondering if it's a situation where it's like which story is the canon story you know and which isn't <laughs> or are they all in their own way allowed to happen who knows we do have a letter here it's an answer from Wyman my Emily your courier is only giving me scant minutes to write back before he leaves for your secret location I'm in tears that he won't give me the location or take me along but I trust you I don't know if it's fair to be this angry with you, or if I should instead cry tears of joy knowing you're still alive. It seems that Morley is on the verge of going to war against Crystal, and the rumours from Dunwall are grim and strange. We've heard about soldiers made of metal, women commanding the trees, and whales gathering in the harbour singing their songs in reverse. I hate the whole world for being between you and me while we should be holding hands. Please be safe or I won't know what to do. Wyman. We have a letter from our love. As we continue to try and hunt down the Horcrux of uh, Delilah while she's on her throne in Dunwall, we can hopefully uh, make some make some progress. Take a bit of a look around the ship. It looks like we're supposed to be going to the deck. So look everywhere but first, just to see if there's any new things standing out. I can't believe it's taken this long for someone to go after the Duke. Another aristocratic boss living in a palace and sucking the marrow out of the same people who built it. Yes, I regret my affiliation. Oh, well. But his father and I were close. It was my hope that Luca would eventually grow up and learn that his actions as ruler of Sirkonos have very real consequences. <laughs> he could always count on the backing of Dunwall's finances and navy. Maybe without that, he would have developed a healthy respect for the people of Sirkonos. Fear of the executioner's block has been a fine motivator for many a ruler. Once the Duke falls, it's my hope that we can build something better here. Something more representative and inclusive. Something that I find really 
intriguing about this development, right, is we're in a situation where our mission on the Dreadful Whale going to Stilton's Manor had a different objective and sort of a lot of different mentality surrounding we got to go figure out what's happened to Stilton, right? Because it's one of uh, Megan's old friends as well. And then we've gone in there and we have changed time. And now Stilton is here on the ship and we're still conferring with the plan to take down the Duke. It's this really weird disconnect here because our character is aware of what we have witnessed and what we have been able to do. But these characters wouldn't be because they've never lived any differently. Uh, Foster never lost an arm or an eye. And it's interesting because this is obviously all still the same in how we've done things. But then any single, uh, any single, uh, like, document or anything that's ever mentioned Stilton's disappearance is now rewritten, effectively. I wonder what Aramis Stilton can accomplish now that things are different. That's the thing about time travel stuff is it does raise a lot of questions, you know? Byrne wanted to be High Overseer. A gangster could never be trusted to run a city. So they've both been, like, shipped off to the mines, but, like, they they never existed in, in the, that specific space anymore because we changed time. Duke Bell uses a body double. Okay. Duke Bell spared no expense on his new palace. It's tacky if you ask me. Look for the palace vault. So we're going straight for the Horcrux. I'm really, really curious after we take a look around how this conversation with the group is going to go because before we leave on the boat, we're talking to we're talking to the gang and we're going, hey, we put Paolo and Burn away. <laughs> apparatus in the aisles. I decline, of course. I'm not some conjurer from penny novels. Besides, I have a great fondness for my privacy, and my interests often find me coming and going in the odd hours of night. It's hard not to consider what might have been different had I plotted a different course through my early years. Was there something I might have said or done when Delilah was my apprentice that could have prevented all of this? On his character, a fixed star we must all follow in darkness. I don't know if that's new information or not. I can't remember if we've heard that information. Delilah being Sokolov's apprentice at one point. But it does definitely have weight to what we're kind of talking about here. All right. We can go up to the deck uh, the short way now. They've opened up the skylight for us. Dunwall Tower. If 
anyone deserves killing, though, it's Duke Luca Abel. I've loved a number of women, and even a couple of men. But I've never loved anyone like my Deirdre. After I left home, those first years on the streets, she's all that kept me from the bottom of the river. I could sleep on a pile of garbage under a leaky awning as long as she was there with me. Sharing a tin of potted meat or a bottle of brandy. We nicked during the day. The Duke and his little brother came through Dunwall. And Deirdre and I got in their way as they stepped out of their fancy coach. The Duke goaded his brother, calling us wharf roaches. And it was the brother who swung the stick that killed her. Splitting her skull, there were wooden gazelles on top of the coach. And I snapped one off and drove it into his eye as deep as it would go. Deirdre was already gone. Dead as a door now. Lying in the muck, staring up at the great Dunwall sky. On the run after that. I was hunted by the City Watch and even members of the Grand Guard up from Zirkonos. People looked at me like I was cursed, spitting whenever I got close. Everyone knew I'd bring trouble. Even the gangs. The Duke's brother has been dead for a long time. But now was my chance to get back at Luca Abel for setting him off against pretty, young Deirdre. Nothing was the same for me after they took her away. Holy shit. That is one hell of a diary entry. A lot of her past there. So, very big motivation for going up against the Duke himself. Amazing to see all of this uh, as the time of day changes. Killed that landing, by the way. So, are we going to be explaining uh, the fact that you used to have uh, one eye and one arm? <laughs> so, I assume that the what we've been doing in the game so far is going after these targets. It's basically in this new timeline always been the same, except instead of Stilton being a recluse in his manner, Stilton was just more like sort of reserved to his manner and not having many allies and we've like made contact with him instead somehow or like I guess in this new timeline uh, Megan and Stilton obviously they're friends so they're just always kind of had a bit of camaraderie and now things are falling in motion where he can help us out. It's very interesting, the questions. Okay, whoever I choose to talk to starts the briefing. So I can't just talk to one or the other at the moment. Are you ready for this? I've been inside a dozen castles and a hundred mansions, and they're the same everywhere. The Duke's palace can't be anything worse than Lady Brisby's social afternoons. Getting inside might not be the hard part. The Duke doesn't exactly run a tight ship. Taking down Duke Abel is only part of the puzzle. You've also got to find whatever it is he's keeping for Delilah. You were cryptic about what you gleaned from visiting the Dust District, which is fine. The world is better with a hint of mystery. But once you're inside the Grand Palace, whatever you do could affect things in Karnaka for years to come. Remember that. I've got a map of the Grand Palace for you, and I know something that may be useful. There's a hidden lever in the pantry that opens a passage to the Duke's vault. If he's keeping anything precious for Delilah, I suspect that's where it'll be. Beyond that, good hunting. I'll see what I can do. I know things in Karnaka are fragile, and I've got a lot to think about after all this is done. Mm. Sokolov calls it the Dust District. 
But it's not called that anymore. I hope I've been of some help to you. It's good to feel useful here near the end of my time. I guess, is that the, what they're trying to go for? Where it's like, eh, well, keep your secrets, you know, of what happened. You can't be like, hey, by the way, uh, time has changed. Look at you. In a lifetime, how many monarchs have done half of what you have in a month? I hear the Duke's wine cellar is exquisite, if you happen to pass through. I remember telling you stories at the Hound Pits pub so long ago. How oh, you've changed. It's not widely known, but the Duke has a body double. The man is the spitting image of Luca. So there you go. We get the intel that he has a body double from Stilton, maybe? And that's why it's been added to the thing. It, would that have been intel that we wouldn't have had if we didn't save Stilton? And I assume that we've just... We already know of each other because we're in a new timeline. Time travel questions. A likable fellow and quite humble. I've no idea where they found him, but the Duke's double has spent years passing for the Duke. Ah. I suppose Luca always hoped his double would be there to take an assassin's bullet. Take care. I hope to see you again. Well, all right then. Should we head toward the palace? Okay, let's go. If I personally, if I was Emily and I walked out of Stilton's Manor and met up with uh, Megan, I'd be going, "Whoa, holy shit, man!" <laughs> Your arm, your eye. <laughs> Ready. We just don't address any of it. We'll assume that all the conversation happened off screen, you know, and it makes it easier for them to handle instead of having to have multiple dialogue and scenes play out differently depending on your choice, I suppose. So I get it from a game point of view, but it feels like the consequences of having a time travel thing be able to change things and then not addressing the changes uh, breaks things for me a little bit. It's very interesting. Self-serving and corrupt, Duke Luca Abel rules Sokonos and orchestrated the coup against you. Enter the Grand Palace to find and eliminate the Duke who protects himself from assassins with a body double. You must also locate Delilah's spirit, the only means, means of counteracting her immortality. At the palace. The Duke has a lookalike body double, meant to confuse assassins. A friend of mine washes the linens and said the double is a smoker, if that helps. Maybe you can talk to him. She says he's a nice guy. What a shitty job, pretending to be a tyrant like Duke Luca Abel. It's remarkable that people tolerate the Duke. He's got an army, control of the mines, and he's had your support from the capital. At the Duke's parties, People carve up the country while eating boiled crab. There were parties like that in Dunwall, full of toadies sucking up to me, stabbing each other in the back. Poor Empress. I could see those party lights from the roof of the abandoned butcher shop where I slept, in the flooded district. I know you grew up hard, Megan. I used to wander Dunwall with my face hidden, but when I got tired of it, I could always go back to the tower. Karnaka's given me perspective. Good. After you've eliminated the Duke, find what he's holding for Delilah and take it. When you're finished, I'll pick you up in the skiff. Something I'm, I'm quite curious about Foster. Megan Foster. She, she wasn't, wasn't always, always a ship captain. captain. In the sense that they allude to her life and her past events, and she mentions the flooded district. And I'm wondering if she wasn't always a ship captain, you know, and also her name may not be her true name. 
And I do wonder if they're not really specifically addressing it or not. But the last time we saw Billy lurk when we let her go was her being on a boat and sailing away. And I wonder if this is what that is. These like subtle hints and references. There's been no mention of Dowd or anything like that. But there has been that mention of the flooded district and, you know, growing up real tough and what she did at Dunwall Tower and all of that kind of stuff. I do wonder if this is our Billy Lurk. It was years ago. The two were inseparable. We haven't had any new dialogue from the heart with her. Those brief days on the street with her childhood friend. The happiest time she's known. The heart hasn't told me anything uh, about that specifically, and no new dialogue, but worth a try, at least. Now let's have a look at where we're at. So we can speak to the nice body double, apparently. He's a smoker. We can see what he has to say. So it's a body double, so we should be nice to the body double. It's not his fault. <laughs> so we've got the Grand Palace. So I think we're entering from the stairs here. That's our way in. Maybe we're not quite there yet, actually. That's like the entry point. We still have to get there. But how crazy is his, uh, how modern architecture. It's so wild that Karnaka, like we made that comment the first time we saw the, uh, the painting of the apartment. We're like, very modern. Stuff comes in. It's gotta get where it's going. That's why they call it the black market. Can't just sit here. Too much chance a grand guard catches on to us, or maybe rightful owners coming to pick it up. What's the delay getting it to the shop? Smugglers are waiting at their boat to deliver contraband to a nearby black market shop. Their captain went ahead to arrange for delivery. Bet are you afraid we'll get caught? The guy that runs the shop is nervous. But if they just let us move it straight off the boat. Now, I got a friend over at the shop. Been running protection for black market shops for years here in Karnaka, and so there's basically no risk. What's your friend's name? That's his secret. He's got you We can just have a conversation with these guys. But where are you gonna go? I can't get out of this thing that I'm in. There we go. So many people trying to get away from Karnaka now. But where are you gonna go? There's money here, even if it's dirty. Is this the same group that were in the level for the Royal Conservatory? <laughs> these two and the captain, right? My brother-in-law tried to get me to sign on with a mining crew. <laughs> No way I'm dying down in a hole. <sighs> Yummy. You look like you can take care of yourself. Here's the palace districts. So there we go. We get to see the actual entrance there. Callus Cove, Emparo Plaza, Carriage Stop, Grand Palace, and the Ravina Boulevard. So we came in on Callus Cove. There we go. Hmm. I wish that our covered face allowed us to walk around guards a lot more. And if you just did something that was suspicious or out of the ordinary, they would take hey, note. You. you seem different. Like I wish there was that level of um, being able to like blend in with crowds or just kind of be there in plain sight. 
you know, but the enemies are very, very keen sighted. They're just like you immediately. And I wish there was a, a bit more of that. Maybe like an outsider ability where you have a little bit of like a change of appearance or something like noble visage. <laughs> Can you help me out with a bit of coin? You're a good one. You know, there's a place near here in some rocks behind a fountain. People have always left offerings there. That's where I started having those odd dreams. I don't go there anymore, but you might want to check it out. Thank you. That'll be our, um... Potential, it could be that one, the Outsider Shrine. Or just a normal rune in general. Sorcery, they said. They burned my books. See you sometime. I don't know why this happens. You lock onto it. If you change your weapon, it stays locked, put it away. But then when you have the heart out and you lock onto it and then put the heart away. Oh God, yeah, of course. It only does it sometimes. Sometimes you like lock onto it, you put the heart away and then the lock on disappears. The wind's low. Working for the Duke's not sight as crooked yes. As long as your grand dog. Working for the Duke's not so bad, as long as you're Grand Guard. There's no such permit, Captain. I know the laws in Karnaka. Laws change. The Duke's given the Grand Guard leeway to create new fees when needed. You know who else had a nice shop? That clockmaker. Serafina. Her shop burned down. Yeah, my report said it was probably the Howlers. But no one knows how the fire started. Captain, her brother died in that fire. Sleep inside drunk from what I remember. You've got Gate code, dear brother, are you serious? How are you able to run a safe and vault business if you can't even remember a simple three-digit combination? I set the back alley gate code to your birthday and you thought it was your wedding anniversary. I set it to your wedding anniversary and you thought it was your grandfather's age. I set it to grandfather's age and you thought it was mother's street address. What kind of advice are you giving to your customers for their combinations, I wonder? It's a miracle anybody in this city manages to open one of your safes again after locking them. Anyway, since you leave me no choice, there is the gate combination written in colored ink, which isn't cheap. 912. <laughs> Bring the note with you when you come to my shop. I'll make sure it gets burned. No, I won't leave the gate open. I can't risk having the curious peek inside my little business. Ricardo. Until tomorrow, 912. Pay up. Hey, we've got a bribe go. What's the matter? You saw something? Yeah, I saw these little, little tootsies poking out. Jesus Christ. The alert nature of uh, guards on hard mode. They are always locked in. Hey, I saw some little tootsies walking in the shadows over there. Oh, God, they're actually coming. Oh, for God's sake. Hello. What if we just... What if I just announce myself instead of all of this dancing around, eh? Instead of all this silly dancing around with your stupid eyesight. A body? Very good. Huh? What? Very good, sir. That's not right. You spotted me. You spotted me. Are you proud now? Are you happy? You saw your little legs, my little legs, and you went to investigate. Please, I won't tell anyone I saw you. Don't worry. It's all gonna be okay. I'm gonna throw this guy outside. Your shop has now been saved. And he definitely won't come back for any sort of revenge. Oh, there's people here too. Oh, what's going what on happened here? here? Stop! Guards! What? Someone! Help! I'm just chilling with my guy. He's my new come friend. Someone Let's have a fair fight. Okay. Last. Let's see how you handle Take yourself. that. Ready? This shouldn't take long. What's going on? Keep here? your distance. Hey, Damn you. Oh, my Come on, give me a real blow, will ya? No, there we go. Careful, don't strike your friend. He'll die. Come on. Let's finish this. I'm tired of all this waiting around. I'm going for Han Solo. <laughs> 
Hello, guys. Alright, we got that gate code. And uh, all the guards can go take a nap and we can go and have a look around. I only got slightly annoyed that one guard saw me and, you know, you see how things have a chain reaction to them. Oh, hello. Who's making these? I'll take that if you don't mind. The details on these are pretty cool. Time to check this back gate. Gate must remain closed. Remember to close the gate behind you after each delivery. If you need the code, speak to me directly or Carlos Maletto at Winslow Safe Company next door. Ricardo. Nine, one, two. Hey, open up. I got the code, but it's back on the boat. No exceptions. Either you have the code, or I assume something's off. My boss's orders. She's got the combination on her person, which is so funny. Don't forget the password either, I won't open the back door. Next time, dock your boat in a different place. You started to attract unwanted attention. The Grand Guard have doubled their patrols since the Duke's last decree, so we've got to be careful. Not the same group from the Royal Conservatory mission. Oh. Oh. Did you just... Wait, what? Huh? Everybody's looking out for themselves right now. Why did it sound like he was like passing out? Use the passcode. Don't know the passcode, do nothing. Oh. Wait a minute. So the passcode also isn't 9112? You kind of stand out. So 912? Might want to keep a low profile around the law. Oh, maybe we have to go back to the boat now? Got the customer she, oh, sorry, she said that she left it on her boat, didn't she? Right. Do, 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 do. Yes, of course. But of course, she said that she left the code on, on her boat. So now that we've got the key, we go back to the boat. Little bit of back and forth, you see. <clears throat> A little bit of the old jolly back and forth thing. Huh? What? What? Not right! God! Someone! No! Don't be pissed off at me. I'm just running around. Oh. Why did I even... Why did I even get the key, man? They just opened it right up. I'm gonna eat your jellies now. There you go. Confiscated merchandise. To the operator of this vessel... Oh. Oh! Huh! <laughs> oh, this is funny. Uh, okay. One thing after another. To the operator of this vessel, this is official notification that your cargo has been seized by the Grand Guard for failure to pay the docking tariffs and other fines you owe. If you come up with the coin, you'll find my associate and me in an apartment just before the Wall of Light checkpoint on the way to the Grand Palace. Look for the target mannequins on the balcony. Better hurry, though. After a period of a few days, your good will be sold to cover our expenses. Corporal Rivera Ferros of the Grand Sakonan Guard. So that's what I, I'm like, why did they open it? <laughs> because the Grand Guard came in and cleared out, which means uh, the code has been taken to a new location. So, apartment before, uh, by the way, oh, you can see this guy. The 
Grand Guard killed the workers. Jesus Christ. Okay. Well, that delivery delivery woman's gonna have a bit of an issue. All right. So. Uh, by the wall of light and targeting mannequins and there's also grand guard in the way this is fun I like this back and forth of a pretty funny uh, situation for us at least that's gorgeous um, Take a look around. There's our, there we go. There's our targeting mannequins. I something I really love about Dishonored is like the amount of buildings you can go in and out of. Like I really, really like the exploration level there. Okay, we need to take out this watchtower. She could be reading the letter right now. Thinking about me right now. Take this off. The overseers are still waging war against the howlers in the dust district. Wall of light powered by the windmill. What's going on? That's what happens when you've got someone like the Duke running. How the hell does this apartment have blood flies when it's so close to the Grand Guard? We're packing up the kids and relocating to Morley. Gristle's in chaos with everyone fighting over the new Empress, and Tivia's too cold. I'm not going to take kissing. Oh, that's nice. I meant to lock on to the rune and I have set the alarm on the grandfather clock instead. Very good. You need something? So we'll wait for that to go off. I don't know how long it takes for the alarm on a grandfather clock to go off. Seemingly some time. I guess it's not even going, actually. Which is really strange. Oh, hello. There's one of you. Good night. There's always one of them hive keepers. Go to sleep. It's okay. Maybe there's something about the uh, setting alarms on the grandfather clock that I failed to understand, but I don't think it went off. Here. Oh, okay. You're going to be able to come check out in here? Let's see. What was it? The guards wouldn't come and check out in this area because it's uh. blood fly nest. They just blocked it up. They just went, just plug it. It'll be fine. I wonder if that works. Why does this feel like properly lived in as well? Like, look at all the lights on in here. Like, this must have happened recently. Then 
they just left everything on. We got a painting in here too. Lucky us. Got a lot of blood amber for us today. Ah, Dowd in the Parable of Lost Seasons. Letter from an admirer of Dowd. Dear Alfred, I received the book, a good find, but I must admit I have my doubts regarding the historical value of the work, The Knife of Dunwall, feeling remorse about killing the tyrant Jessamine. As I write, I'm staring at his portrait, and I suspect that Dowd always knew destiny was guiding his hand, firm and unforgiving. Anyway, the book was an entertaining read, so thank you again. Keep sending me all the information you can about this mysterious figure we both admire, your friend Claudio. There was a book written called The Knife of Dunwall, and it was... And it was DLC. The Knife of Dunwall, excerpt from a penny novel, chapter 3. Dowd stared at the blade. The plan had gone perfectly, even better than he could have hoped. In fact, the whole thing had been too easy. But now that was over, he felt hollow, and there was nothing in the world that could fill him again. He knew it was certainty that scared him. Billy called from the next room. Boss? Leave me. He nudged the door closed before she could say anything else. He trusted her more than any of them, but he didn't feel like talking. Cleaning the blood from the blade, he studied the marks it made on the cloth. Royal blood, but it looked the same as any he'd seen before. Weren't the High and Mighty supposed to be filled with something different? Something better? Dowd was tired. No amount of blood could change the way he felt. He didn't drink as a general rule, and sex had never interested him. He felt a kind of exhaustion that couldn't be soothed away. A smile crept across his mouth. The knife of Dunwall, exhausted. And yet something else. What was it he was feeling, exactly? He looked into Jessamine Caldwin's eyes at the moment her life slipped away, and in that moment, a thought occurred to him. He'd made a mistake. He'd been misled. That kind of thinking was useless. She so was just as dead whether he regretted it or not. But he'd seen his true face reflected in her eyes, seen himself for what he really was. Not a renowned assassin, not some great shaper of history, just another playing piece in an unknowable game. The game of Dishonored. Guards up here because there's the windmill. It's a false one. Who's yelling? That's what I wanted. Oh, this dude's like doing a. Oh well. Okay. A dice game. Just got word that something's happening, but it could be anything. Maybe it's a good thing, like beef stew for dinner. <laughs> More likely, it's some kind of commotion. Huh. I guess these dudes aren't really able to get there. Leave them alone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <coughs> yeah, I still need stuff from here, so. Wait, did I just totally miss this room? Uh, rune in the bedroom? Hang on. I did indeed. Wait. It is. in here. How did I miss that? I had it open. Too busy focusing on how to get out of here. Alright, we've got two runes. Okay, so I think we're safe to play this audiograph now. And still need to try and get this code. Oh, there it is. Timing windows that ignore the tides, fake boat manifests, and private door codes. Might be easier just to play it straight. I thought it would be on a piece of paper. Goods. Anyway, so I don't forget it. The code for the black market shop is Sir Conan wine is better than Tivian prisons. Idiots. Okay. For some reason, I thought it would be a note with a bunch of cargo. I guess this could be classified as 
the cargo. Can I please get the stuff? Thank you. Wonderful. Okay. Well, we'll be back for the Wall of Light because it's time for us to head to the Black Market. Whoop! I think I'm away from guard presence here because they're all knocked out. Shit! Who did that, I wonder? Time for me to get let in. Sir Conan wine is better than Tivian prisons. Sir Conan wine is better than Tivian prisons. And better Crystallian clap than Morellian gout. All right. Nice. Uh, yeah, I'm here to deliver your stuff. And by that, I mean, I'm going to rub you. A visit from the new Empress Delilah. Kanaka could be her summer residence. Um, oh, you can get a visit from the old Empress. If you, if you want. Um, so I'm assuming we're still going to be looting this place. And he's not going to be none too happy. <laughs> I think what we should do is take the key so he doesn't realize and open this. And, oh, oh, that's the sound that we heard earlier. <laughs> and we're going to have a normal conversation with him first, um, because we haven't even spoken to the guy yet. It would be rude to Rob before having a conversation, and we'll see what he has to say. Please take a look around. Yes. I'm clearing the stock and leaving the city. Uh, wonderful. Do you mind if I just steal from you then? Okay. Upgrades available. The prices reflect the exquisite quality of the items offered. The Rebbed siblings. Bullets are fired in rapid bursts. Magazine size set to three. Improved accuracy. Reduced area of effect. Spread. Damage range. And the insistent gentleman. The pistol chain feeds ammo and never needs reloading. And uh, ne reloading. <laughs> Semi-automatic firing. That's pretty cool. And a sticky grenade and a spring razor that works yeah. twice. So we don't really need Let's to see. masterwork our pistol. Is it not a masterwork? Ah, there it is. It's over here. But you have to get some other upgrades first. We really don't need to upgrade our pistol because it's just going to be our least used thingy. We'll certainly be going more into those particular types of upgrades when we play Lethal as Corvo. Uh, with all our money, I will get this upgrade. I'll get that. I'll get that. The crossbow stuff, we got to find these. Bolts can pierce multiple enemies, and when using the spyglass, the crossbow has perfect aim, which I think we actually... Um, I realized that we got these, right? We just need to do this now. Yes. So... I don't think we'll ever really get into a situation where we'll pierce multiple, but perfect aim, even when we change shots through the spyglass. I'll take that. Very good. Very good. And then with gear, we don't need to rob these places anyway, because, like, it's not expensive. What is this? Disabled carriage rails. An engineer on the take will shut off the electricity to the carriage rails, allowing passage through the wall of light. An easier access to the Grand Palace. Well, what else are we going to spend our money on? We already have access to the Grand Palace through the wall of light, but it doesn't hurt to have another option. Come back soon, if I'm still around. And I'm clearing the stock and leaving the city. Above. Okay. Oh, in front. Ay, ay, ay. What's going on here? Nothing. Yeah. Howlers are such a nuisance, Wait, dude. Shit, monster. Like, howlers are just a genuine nuisance. Dealt with you guys. 
you know? Paolo was shipped off in a box somewhere. Can't you guys just accept that and get out of my hair? No sign of Maybe they won't hear me as I proceed to stomp on this light. <laughs> Be careful. She's probably hiding somewhere close. You're gonna can see me if I break their line of sight behind the thing. Yeah. Didn't see me. Why does it why does it sound like they're right in front of my face? I should... Sounds like they're a lot closer than they actually are. Still gotta get this one. So I'm gonna go back over this way. See how it happened? I lock onto it, and I put the thing away, and then it disappears. Okay, it's behind a wooden thing. Oh, this is gonna make some noise, isn't it? Alright, we're okay. Hello! Here you are, back among your own people. The palace born, and those who curry their favor. Are you feeling more comfortable, Majesty? Are these the people you want running a quarter of your empire? No. It never seemed to bother you before. Maybe it looks different up close. Maybe here it's harder to ignore the way the people outside the palace get through the day. In any case, I know what you're after. The heart you carry can only hold one spirit at a time. So, if you want to walk out with a piece of Delilah, you better be ready to leave something behind. There it is. So, Jessamine said... You know, this will be my last night with you. Because we have to release her from the heart. And then we'll put Delilah's in there. And then what are we going to do? Do the old, hey yeah through the Horcrux. And then make Delilah feel it. Are we going to do that in front of her? <laughs> but will there be a non-lethal option to taking out Delilah? And does she deserve it? <laughs> old Charm Carver's writing. 10th of rain. I found a sailor dead in the street, dragged her to an alley to check for loot. Don't know what killed her, but it wasn't thieves since her pockets was full of coins and other things. The best was two nice pieces of whalebone. I made sure I soaked them good in her blood, just like my mother showed me when she had the black bone charm before me. I took out the black charm and strung it around my neck, hanging tween my paps. Started carving one on one of them, them whale bones from the sailor, and it's eager to work. Too eager, so I speak to it. Calm it. You got to be patient, I say. Once that whale bone was still, I carved a curse around one side, then a sweet tempter on the other. Took me a good time, too. It's my mother's black bone charm that makes it all work. Got warm to the touch and started to sing while I was working. This new bit of whale bone is sure special. Strong. Fetch a good price from a street boss or smuggler. Fifteenth of rain. My little charm is done. It'll make a gambler drunk with luck, walk away a winner every time. Though each night spent at the tables, the price is paid. Eyes go and milky bit by bit, till they're all boiled up like eggs. Yeah, what a good downside. Your money? Good. Hey guys. An old stolen diary, an excerpt from the diary of an unknown, of an, of a known heretic, sorry, seized before his execution. For most, the outsider is nothing but a child's tale, meant to instill fear of that beyond the family, the community. When I was young, my mother and I were on the run, moving from one village or sea town to the next, camping in the woods for weeks, always with the cursed overseers at our backs. At night, she told me of her dreams, of the empty place which the, the outsider whispered to her, 
With each visit, her craft grew until she could see through the eyes of moths and unlock a door or window latch from outside a house. I will find this empty place. Somehow the key to open the void will fall into my hands. In time, I will learn the secret and he will call to me as he called to her. Call me a heretic for my studies. Drag me to your cold stone cell. Whip my flesh and put me on trial as an apostate. Burn my body to ash. But I will continue to seek the realm of which my mother spoke. It is my life's meaning. I wonder if he ever did. Unfortunately, he never made it that far. Okay. Where to next? Continue our journey to the Grand Palace. Try and get past these howlers that seem to just be incredibly stun locked. It's just in the same position. Oh, never mind. That one finally saw us. I think it's because there's the second one. Yeah. Alright, the second one. The second one finally saw us. As they changed uh, positions, sadly. And now we're back here. So right, we have no business with the Howlers anymore. We get to do what we do. And we can take this carriage route. But I also want to check out this building here. And I don't think we've checked out this building either if we're able to get into it. we check upstairs in the black market? I'm not sure. Not the black market, sorry, but whatever this building is. What's in here? I don't think we've been in here. Yeah, we haven't. Hello? The snuff box. We don't really get unique world dialogue. We get a lot of just repeated Jessamine dialogue. The outsider walks among us. Here at the Silver Spike, among our many offenses against the Duke's endless decrees, you can add another. Your dear editor counts among his friends several citizens well informed on occult matters. As such, I can share this with you. The outsider is not likely to be forgotten here in the southern capital. Many of the shrines built to honor him have been disturbed of late, as if recently visited. That figure of myth apparently walks among us, gathering up offerings. Some leave ruin carved tokens of bone in the abandoned corners of Karnaka, and others interested in such matters report that yes, these tokens are gone a night later. Trust your senses, do not taste him in the withered sickly crabs you boil for dinner. Can you hear his voice in the hum of bloodfly wings? What else could explain our current plight here in Karnaka? Murder in the streets and firing squads as a response, such times! Believe me when I tell you, my fingers tremble as I scribble these truths, but I am willing to continue. On you, uh, I'll continue on for your benefit. Do not be seen reading this printing of the Silver Spike. Burn it as soon as you are done, and eat the very paper should you see an overseer approaching. Pentranilla's apartment key needed. Well, I'm already in the apartment, so, um, how about that? Huh? Huh? Who's hurting me? Hmm? Who are you to huh me? So.
checked in there. Doesn't look like this building here is accessible. So we're now going to go check out this one over here. So we can get our bone charms. Note to Lysia Pastor's mother. Mother, please don't be angry and hear me out. I know it's you who's been coming to my apartment to straighten up. I'm sure you mean well, but please stop. Anyway, I made up my mind to move to the Dust District. That way I can be closer to those I'm helping. For other reasons too that I won't mention now because of how it might upset you. Anyway, it's unlikely I'll ever return to the Palace District. I'll have someone sell my apartment here along with the furniture. I know this isn't what you wanted for me, but it's who I am. And don't waste any more of your time matchmaking. I do not wish to marry. None of this is meant to make you feel badly. Please try to understand. They say something's amiss that I just can't get comfortable. Wait till he puts on those boots. Sees the surprise I love for him. Get the clankers off Karnika's streets. We've read that. Clankers. Hear you. Tricky timing. Enemy grenades take longer to explode. And now we go to this bone charm. Hmm. It won't let me go onto the tracks that way, but I can just do that. Okay. So all of this is off. There's still a lot of guards out because I haven't done anything about them. I've got enough to worry about without that constant complaining. I need to do... I can do a Mesmerize. But it's only going to affect two people. Uh, let's see, we've got four charms. I could upgrade my Mesmerize to affect three. And extend the duration. Um, or I can also just domino them for four. Once was a mad I honestly think if we domino them, and ever so slightly, it could be large as a narwhal. I'm bored. They're just gonna fall, which is going to be a bit of trouble because it is gonna make people freak out. It will make people freak out. We're going to just remove them. Here? What? And then what we might be able to do with the remaining ones. Wherever they may be. Whoever did that, well get them. Come on, I don't have time for games! They're barely showing up on my thing because it's so. He's been Did that work? You can't stay hidden forever. It didn't work. Huh? What? what? Okay, the mesmerize didn't work. Hold on. Hello, anybody? Uh... Don't make me search the whole place. I don't have time for that. There you go. Hey. There we go. I've been waiting for you. Disappear. And 
unfortunately didn't last long enough for this last guy. <laughs> That's fine. This is the fun of it. He'll be around. You can hear him walking. Don't hey. kill me! Now we're hey! I can't take much more this. There we go. That worked out for the guards. There you go, everyone go sleepy. No! I beg you! Okay, we're good. Because that will allow us a bit of an actual walk around. Grand Guard returns to Dust District. For the first time in several years, the Grand Sakonan Guard have resumed full policing operations in the Batista District, now commonly referred to as the Dust District. Though never officially confirmed, the Grand Guard had abandoned the district while a conflict played out between the Howler Gang and the local overseer presence. The two rivals wrought such violence and discord that Grand Guard leadership felt it more prudent to enact a policy of containment. Now it appears the skirmishes between the two parties have ended with no clear victor, allowing the Grand Guard to resume their patrols. While the situation within the district is still murky, it seems that Paolo's howlers have been left scattered and weakened without a leader, while Vice Overseer Liam Byrne has gone missing, according to the Abbey. Okay, so the conflict did still take place and we did ship them off, and then I guess while we were still in the manor doing time stuff, that allowed the Grand Guard to, to notice this, move in, clear them out, seal off that section. And then Lucia Pasta also came in around that time. So I wonder how long we were in that manor for, right? Shuffling through timelines. It wouldn't have been more than a day. But there you go. Because I was wondering if it just effectively undid the whole thing, like they were never even there to begin with, you know what I mean? Because the game doesn't really clarify, it doesn't address any of it. You're just business as usual, except Stilton is good now, and um, Megan has limbs. Apartment seizure. Mr. Marletto, on the authority of Duke Luca Abel, due to an urgent security matter regarding buildings with balconies overlooking Ravina Boulevard and the newly installed wall of light, you are hereby required to grant us access to your apartment indefinitely. We ask that you keep a spare key at your shop so that Grand Guard personnel now have access to your apartment at all times. This action is necessary to prevent miscreants from bypassing the wall of light checkpoint. As director of Winslow Safes, you will certainly understand our security concerns. We trust there will be no questions or delay. God damn it, man. All right, now I gotta go back to the shopkeeper at the safe place. <laughs> Imagine if I there were still guards about and I couldn't do this, woo! I, I sure do love taking out the guards because then I can do this, woo! All right, so the howlers are back through here. We don't want that. We're going to go shopping in the safe shop. Hello, sir, I've come for your key. Um, sorry, but that's not an area for customers. Where's your bloody key, mate? I'm not supposed to say so, but the Duke's cousin got his safes here. Oh, is that right? There's your apartment seizure note again. Is it in the cash register? It is. Yes, I'm robbing you, by the way. <laughs> it is in the apartment. <laughs> the, the cash register. That's so weird. Right. Anyway. Anyway. Thank you, sir. You've been very helpful. And now we head back. Running feels so good in this game. It's a shame I don't get to do it enough, you know? <laughs> Gotta spread my legs and fly! Ow. Gotta do it to get the spoon charm. Oof, I'm in. Alright, hello? I saw a blueprint as well, so we'll grab that. Get out of the way. Hello? Strong lungs. So, swimming capacity increased, I assume. Greater lung capacity underwater. Oh! 
can actually go right into the Grand Palace here. Hiya! And we'll also loot your apartment while we're at it because why not? Oh. Damn. Hmm. Ha! I don't know. Hmm. Wait, let's take a look around. You got a code in here? Winslow Safe Company. Is it gonna it's not gonna be one, two, three, is it? You're not gonna one, two, three me like it is on the photo, are you? One. Oh. God damn. One, two, three. Oh wow. You know something that I realize about a lot of the safe codes in this game is you'll find that a lot of the combinations, the numbers that are already there before you start moving them, they're always a little close. Two of them seem to be closer and one of them seems to be further away, but they usually seem to follow that same pattern from what I've noticed. Okay, so we can go to the Grand Palace now. However, with that one, guys, we'll be bringing this episode of Dishonored 2 to a close. Thank you so much for joining me today. I did have to end this one here uh, because of time constraints, but I am very much looking forward to pushing through into the Grand Palace next time. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you then.